Hi there, this is Scott Bradfield. It's novel writing for City Lit, the online course. City Lit's first totally online course. So you're in, you embarked on a, a new era of education here, which I, I'm quite I'm quite happy with so far. I think it's going pretty well. I've enjoyed the class, and it uh, seems to be a good way for people to interact, and they can interact when they feel like it, which is nice, because sometimes you don't feel like showing up on Tuesday morning at 10.30, and you can show up when you feel like in this class. I wanted to talk a little bit about just the uh, finish up with our, our, our text this, this term, The Color of Blood. Uh, Brian Moore's, you know, probably his shortest novel, if you discount Catholics, which was more of a long story. And it's, uh, it's not his best. It's, one of his, it's, it's a good book, as I've said, but it's very consistent in Moore's you know, canon, as they say, his, his life work. And I just wanted to talk about some of the things you need to think about when you embark on your novel. We mentioned this at the beginning of the course. First of all, what it's, a, a novel, there's a lot of people who are interested in experimental novels, and I'll talk about that next week. But the novel is a hard place to do radical experiments with in the sense that if you experiment and you try something completely different, you know, say you want to start your novel, you want to write a story in a completely different way than you've read before, you spend two or three months getting into a novel and you're, you're lost and it doesn't work and you end up throwing the whole book out. You can't really save bits of a novel because a novel is continuous. I mean, you start it, you start with a character in a world, and you get to page 100, and you realize you can't write about what it's like to be a worm living on Mars. Then you realize you have to throw the whole thing out. There's almost nothing you can do with all these bits and pieces from the, from the text. In the same way that if you're a novelist who's concerned about uh, representing a sort of realistic sense of the world, and you try to describe life in contemporary South Africa, and you've never been to South Africa, you're going to find yourself halfway through the novel completely doomed, and you will have to throw the whole book away. Or go to South Africa and try to make a book out of what you thought it was going to be. This is a long about, I guess I'm making a roundabout uh, way of saying what most writers will tell you, that when you write a novel, it may not be true of a short story, but when you write a novel, you want to know that world you're, you're, you're embarking on. It may be imaginative. It may be science fiction or fantasy or mystery or thrillers, but it has to conform to some idea you have of the world. So if you have a vision of Mars, then you'll see good writers, whether it's Ray Bradbury or uh, Kim Stanley Robinson, describing the Mars that they see through the world they live in, in the same way of fantasy writers, thriller writers, and the thriller writers like Moore and Green have learned a, a quick trick, which is that they can establish a, plan, a world such as this, this unnamed country in the color of blood at, based on the places they've been. So it has an East European feel to it. It's not set in any particular country. But the world that Moore knows is the world of the Catholic Church and of Catholicism. And that's the world that he, he sort of needs and he establishes in his imagination in this book and in many of his books. He doesn't uh, go off in a complete fantasy world or a completely invented country. He brings something with him that he can work on, and that is the sense of Catholicism. And as you will see when you read the novelists who you enjoy, it's useful to read the ones who write good books that people read throughout their career. So... You might say, okay, I didn't like every Brian Moore novel or every Graham Greene novel I read or every Alison Lurie novel. But for the most part, people are reading all those books. They have different opinions about each of the books, but the writer is taking a different tact on what they know year after year and establishing a readable novel. Those are the writers to look at. I'll say it again. Don't look at, you know the writer who won a book or a prize and then wrote ten books nobody's ever read, or Norman Mailer who wrote, who wrote a couple of books that won some awards, but wrote lots of books nobody ever reads. Look at the people who write readable, in, enjoyable, engrossing novels year after year throughout their life. And that's one of the issues, the, the points, I think, of, of Moore. He brings with him certain interests in every book, 
And he has those interests to keep him going. So he doesn't completely go off the map. He experiments, he experiments widely in his career. He's written a ghost story, he's written a fantasy novel, he's written a science fiction novel, a very short science fiction novel called Catholic, set in the future. He always, was always trying different things, just as Graham Greene was always trying different types of books, but they brought with them something that they could inhabit that world with. Um, not just Catholicism for more, but a people, of, people who have faith in something. So his books are often about people like Cardinal Bim, who have faith in something, they believe in something, or they question the idea of faith. And it's an interest of almost all his characters. Now, one of the things I was trying to talk about earlier, and I'll reiterate again, is when we reach the end of this book, and I think it's quite a successful ending. I didn't know if I liked it the first time I read it, but you do feel that, that, that Bem reaches a certain point in his life where he can't go beyond what he's tried to do. He's actually he's met the world he lives in, and those two things aren't going to work together. So at the point where he finds the, the great challenge of, of Bem's life in this book is that he has faith in the world, and he has faith in his church, and he has faith in his God, and he believes all these things will find a better world and will help people. He's a good man. He's like the best person that Moore ever wrote about, I think. And he wants to make that church the way he envisions it. And when he finds out that it's actually Catholics and fellow Catholics who are perhaps responsible for the threat to his own life, it, it, it enervates him. It, it energizes him to try to s solve this problem. And he doesn't solve it. Now, he certainly is in a trajectory in the course of the book that he can't change. And that's what you're looking for when you get into a, a novel. The beginning is, is, a, is a play. You can start with characters, you can start with a situation, you can invent anything you'd like to do with your character at the beginning of the book. But there's a certain point in the book where the novel takes over your life. And I want to say that this is one of the best parts of writing a novel. The point where the world you've established and the character you've established in that world start to make their own decisions for you. Bem has two places he's worried he's he's trying to work between the government and the church and he's trying to establish a vision of the future for the people who he serves as this world starts to take off and certain actions have been initiated around him as you see this machinery of the world starts to affect him and he's only so many places that Bem can go he can run away from everything or we can drive straight to the heart of the problem, which is the speech he has to give. And when you find these points in your book where the characters start to find and make choices that they have to make, you're going to find the book is going to start to write itself in a way. And I think almost every novelist, I can, I can say this, that, and every novelist I've known can, has said this, that the great pleasure of a novel is that second half when the book takes off for you. And it starts to take you somewhere. And you need to follow that. And that is why I've, I've always agreed with well, Brian Moore and many other writers who don't like to plot novels and tell you what's going to happen at the end because we don't always know what will happen at the end. It's, it, it can be, it's a dicey proposition. You can get halfway through a book and get lost and not have any idea where you're going. But if you have the first half of the novel and you have the world and you have the character then you have a book I think you will finish. It may take you a while, it may take you longer than you thought, it may come a lot quicker than you thought, but that's your job is establishing that first half of the book, and I think you'll find your way to the end. The last thing I wanted to say was that when you finish a book, and you again realize everyone is just starting books, or just beginning their books, and starting to establish some, some sense of writing novels and writing every day. Once you finish your book, you really need to start thinking quickly about getting on to the second or the third, the fourth. Don't sit around waiting for the book to be published or waiting until you find a publisher for it. You'll look around and read interviews with the writers and find that most writers spent a long time trying to find a publisher for their first book, and they went straight on and wrote the second book and the third book and the fourth book. 
And that's personal advice I would give you, is that just, just think past the first book, write your next book, and, and many, many times the first novel that you've written turns out to be the third or fourth book you've published. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're going to be a novelist, you're not a novelist for one book, you're going to be a novelist for the long haul. That means you're going to have to get up and start to work again, because it's a bit of time, as you know, writing a book. So those are my last thoughts about Breen's book, Brian Moore's novel, and uh, I just wanted to say that next week we'll talk about a couple alternatives, different types of novels, because the novel is a wide and varied beast, and we'll talk about the various different types of books you can write, and the ways you can experiment with form and time and character and point of view, they're multitudinous, the ways you can change these things. But the first thing I always say is learn the basics, and you can't learn the basics of any other better writer, any, any writer better than Brian Moore. Okay, I'll talk to you next week, and uh, keep writing. Bye.